me that his one of his tactics coming into the debate was to um, concede some points that um, he knew you were right about when it comes to like race. Um, so so then he was going to cede those points and then accuse you of straw manning him. him was was very disingenuous to anybody, you know, obviously disingenuous to anybody who picked up on that tech. Yeah, um, you know, I, but I try as hard as I can to be fair and fairly portray my opponent's position. Um, I think there was one time to where um, I may not have, but I corrected myself. When I was talking about forced integration, I know he's not promoting forced integration, but he would socially encourage it. So I said, okay, let me correct myself. I meant even socially encouraging could have the same effects. But for the most part, you know, I try to portray my opponent's argument very accurately. I don't want to just take down a weak argument. I want to take down their argument, you know, not a weaker version of it. But what you'll see a lot of time with leftist people is that they will oftentimes project, they will accuse you of what they themselves are guilty of. And this diverts attention away from themselves. And not only that, but then it also kind of undercuts your identification of what they're doing because if he accuses me of straw, of straw manning him, then me saying, nah, -uh, you're the straw manner. Well, now I sound like a child. <laughs> so it's a, it's a very, it's a very, you know, effective tactic. Um, but I do feel like he, he straw man me a lot throughout the debate. And that's why I just spend a lot of it uh, uh, clarifying the straw man that he was making, uh, showing how he was making a lot of false presumptions and dichotomies, correcting them and moving on. But that's to be expected, right? And, so, yeah. and, and I kind of, I, I found the, uh, the particular straw man that he was arguing against that um, because you recognize that the message is most suitable for uh, white males, that that means that you don't want to talk to females or black males or, you know, just any non-white male uh, um, that, that you don't at all or market to them at all. Um, I, I think that not only was it a straw man, but it was, um, it was an attack on your character as well. It was a, yeah, and you know, and he's, he's right in a very limited sense to where if I had to choose between marketing between to a white man and a black female, of course I would choose the white man. But oftentimes there's not that false dichotomy. I will right. tailor my message to the white man, but because we broadcast this message and anyone and everyone can access it, that means anyone and everyone can benefit from it. And a lot of this stuff that I talk about does apply to everyone from every demographic. Uh, Ethno-nationalism and cultural homogeneity and libertarian ideals, the things that I promote, don't only benefit white people, they benefit everyone, as far as I'm concerned. They benefit black people, they benefit Hispanics, they benefit, they would benefit, benefit Asians. Um, so there's not this zero-sum game sort of thing going on in my head. In fact, the only way to truly maintain true diversity is to allow people to segregate and maintain the integrity of their cultures and their values and their civilizations. And this sort of achieving this sort of ethnically or culturally homogenous societies, another straw man he made, does not preclude the benefits you can get from free trade. Because you can still trade with one another without being neighbors. You could still engage in the, in the global uh, division of labor uh, without being part of the same community or living in the same nation. You know, we've done it for thousands of years. We try with Japan all the time, but they're still very ethnically and culturally homogenous. You don't need to sacrifice.